What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and here we are with why are Indian weapons in this tiny country? Now before we can dive into this video, if you happen to enjoy it, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and if you'd like to support this channel by becoming a member, there is a link in the description section in which you can sign up and receive exclusive benefits that I think you guys will enjoy. Let's see what we got here. On September 19th, 2023, explosions rocked the Republic oh, of Arkansas. Azerbaijan launched military action in the Nagorno-Karabakh region on Tuesday, a move that could oh foreshadow a new war. Artsakh, also known as Nagorno-Karabakh, was a breakaway state and functioned as a de facto part of Armenia, witnessed a large-scale military offensive by Azerbaijan. Days later, Artsakh government announced that formally ending more than 30 years of separatist rule for the ethnically Armenian enclave inside Azerbaijan. <laughs> Armenia's closest ally and security guarantor Russia did not intervene during this one-day war in which Azerbaijan seized the long-disputed region of Karabakh. This meant Jesus. Armenia no longer saw Russia as an ally, let alone a security guarantor. This prompted Armenia to turn to other major powers, and one of them happens to be India. Despite oh, wow. having a special relationship with Russia, India is encroaching in what has been Russia's exclusive zone of influence. So, why is India risking its relationship with Russia by arming an oh. anti-Russian Armenia? This is, this is very interesting, to, yeah. Because it seems like they do have a good relationship with Russia, but at the same time, India has no ties or loyalties to anyone, right? They have good relationships. It seems like all around the world, like, but like, they're not like allies or anything with anyone. They usually stay out of fights. They stay out of wars. They don't pick sides. Um, so while they do have a good relationship with Russia, it's not like they owe Russia any loyalty. The South Caucasus, a region of diverse ethnic groups including Georgians, Armenian Christians, and Muslims of Azerbaijan, has long been a hotspot for disputes due to its historical ties with Armenian, Georgian, Persian, and Turkish empires. These disputes mm. have territorial claims dating back 2,500 years. God However, dang. to understand the context of current geopolitical puzzle, we must go back at least 100 years. At the end of World War I, Armenians were facing the aftermath of Armenian genocide by Turks from 1915 My to 1918. God. It is estimated that over a million Armenians were massacred and over 1.5 million were deported, leaving them confined to the modern-day Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. After the collapse of Russian Empire in 1917, both Armenia and Azerbaijan claimed the Karabakh region, leading to a small war in 1920, but it was intervened by Soviet Russia's 11th Red Army, integrating the area into Soviet Union by 1921. Mm. They established Nagorno-Karabakh, an area with a 94% Armenian population, as an autonomous oh, wow. region within the Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic. The conflict was thus shelved for the next 70 years, but flared up again when the Soviet Union collapsed. In 1991, while Azerbaijan and Armenia became independent, Nagorno-Karabakh, backed by Armenia, established the Republic of Artsakh, leading to the first war of Nagorno-Karabakh with Azerbaijan. By the wow. war's end, Armenians controlled about 9% of Azerbaijani territory outside the enclave. In 2020, oh. Azerbaijan reclaimed lost territories and some parts of Artsakh in the Second Nagorno-Karabakh War. A subsequent large-scale offensive in 2023 brought the entire disputed area under Azerbaijani control, forcing tens of thousands of Armenians to seek refuge in Armenia. Oh my God. Armenia, a member of Collective Security Treaty Organization, a NATO-like military alliance with Russia and five others, held de facto control over Artsakh. While CSTO protocol obligates member nations to assist if a member is attacked, it doesn't apply to extraterritorial disputes like Nagorno-Karabakh, which wasn't officially part of Armenia. Huh. But Russia is a close ally and a security guarantor of Armenia, and yet Moscow failed to support them during the conflicts in 2020 and 2023. Dang. As a result, Armenia no longer views Russia as a trusted ally, let alone a security guarantor, and is actively seeking new alliances for its defense collaboration. 
After its crushing defeat in the Second Karabakh War, Armenia began procuring arms from India, including four Swathi weapon locating radars. After this, New Delhi agreed to supply Yerevan with anti-tank missiles, Pinaka multi-barrel rocket launchers, and other munitions worth $250 million. Jesus. India's interests in the region are multifaceted, including mm. its goal to counter Turkey for its support to Pakistan's fictitious claims on Jammu and Kashmir, which oh. is an Indian territory. This backing by Turkey stems from its imperial ambition to create a pan-Turkic empire, comprising all Turkic-speaking nations, a worldview that continues to direct Ankara's foreign policy. This was it's so crazy, like, to when I watch these videos and I find out, like, how many disputes are going on around the world uh, for territories between different countries and everything. Because in my head, I just thought everybody had their territories outlined and that's just... But I didn't know where there were, like, legit disputes over, like, pieces of land. Like, hey, no, that's our territory. No, that's our territory. I didn't know there were there were still disputes going on. So, like, when I watch these videos, I'm like, shoot. So, uh, Turkey trying to create a, another Turkish empire. Um, so, they're backing, the, uh, they're backing Azerbaijan, I believe. Is that what he was saying? Or they're back, they were backing Pakistan. And now India is giving these weapons to Armenia, which is supposed to be secured by Russia, or Russia is supposed to be their security guarantor. Uh, but Russia did nothing to come to their defense when they were going to war with Azerbaijan, and now India is the one supplying them with weapons, although they have a good relationship with Russia. There's a lot going on here. It's evident in 2020 when Azerbaijan, allegedly guided by Turkey, attacked Artsakh region. This direct involvement, including supply of weapons and troops, marked the peak of pan-Turkism policy aggressively pursued by Turkish President Erdogan. And it was further intensified in his speech on Azerbaijan's Victory Day celebrations. Azerbaijan's topraklarını işgalden kurtarmış olması mücadelenin bittiği anlamına asla gelmiyor. Bugüne kadar Siyasi ve askeri alanda sürdürülen mücadele bundan sonra çok daha farklı cephelerde devam edecektir. Thus, he unequivocally confirmed Turkey's readiness to secure its geostrategic interests by all kinds of means, including force. Both Turkey and wow. Azerbaijan are pushing ahead for the proposed Zangazur corridor, linking them through Armenia's disputed Zangazur region, heightens Armenia's concerns. Armenia is a non-Turkic nation and is perceived as a barrier in the way of a pan-Turkic empire, which raises fears of a joint Turkic offensive to annex the Zangazur region in the future. Before mm. we continue to next part of the video, please hit like and make sure to subscribe to support our channel for more such videos. It appears that India was reportedly shipping arms to Armenia through Iran and then cross over to Armenia at the Nordu's border point. This is interesting because Tehran and Moscow are in an alliance of sort against the West, and yet Iran agreed to help India supply weapons in Russia's region of influence. However, this changed when Iran blocked these shipments in April oh, wow. 2024, possibly due to pressure from Russia, which until 2020 was supplying 94% of Armenia's weapons. On the other hand, God, Russia dang. is also wary of Turkey's ambitions and the fact that Ankara is a NATO member. An expansion oh. of Turkey's influence would mean expansion of NATO's influence that could extend mm. as far as Turkmenistan. This is something Putin cannot afford and will do everything to keep other powers away from establishing influence in this region, be it a friend or a foe. Given the geopolitical dynamics of the region, India's involvement is in fact in Russia's favor because that could it keep Armenia like it. away from Western influence. While Armenia may currently show some anti-Russian sentiments, it remains a valuable ally for Moscow in the region. The Russians ah, are not keen dang. on letting Armenia shift its alliance towards the West and end up being another NATO proxy in the region. Iran's well, motive... Russia better step up and help them out. It sounds like, hey, if they don't want them to, to team up with no West, they will let the West gain any influence through them over here. It sounds like Russia better step, step up and start securing some defense for them. It's supposed to be their security guarantor. We'll guarantee them some security. <laughs>
motive of helping India largely stems from Israel's backing of Azerbaijan, which supplied 70% of Azerbaijan's arsenal from 2016 to 2020, giving them an edge in the 2020 war against Armenia. And Israelis' interest in the region is largely driven by a desire to counter their biggest adversary, Iran. The existence of a pro-Israeli Azerbaijan on Iran's northern border poses a security threat to the Iranian regime. This is compounded by the large Azeri population residing in western Iran. Fears exist that Israel and the US could exploit their influence over Azerbaijan to incite anti-Iranian activities among the Iranian Azeris. Hence, oh both God. Russia and Iran would prefer a strong and stable Armenia to safeguard their interests in the region. And for India, its recent military exports to Armenia openly aligns them on Yerevan's side, signaling India's willingness to abandon its non-aligned stance to safeguard its interests. It remains to be seen if this move by India will work in its favor or against it. Yeah, it's a lot going down. It's a lot going down at the moment. Um, it seems like there's so many different countries that have a stake in this Azerbaijan versus Armenia war that's going on. Um, and there's so many different things that could happen depending on who wins, depending on who gets that area. Um, and I just wouldn't know anything about any of this stuff without watching these videos and kind of gaining the knowledge of its territories out here that people been disputing for all these years that people feel like is rightfully theirs and they going to war over their territories. So, uh, this stuff is interesting. Um, uh, that's all we got for this. If y'all enjoyed that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Check out this video next, and I'll see you on the next one.